Hi all, this is Mossy. And... Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Whoa. Sit, that we clicked on the wrong link. And I want to go to chat. Alright, yeah. This is Mozzie. Welcome back. This is Cinderella Phenomenon. Uh, you notice that the title screen is slightly different because we have Rod. Uh, Rod's route finished on the right side right here. Oh, uh, look at him. He's so cute. Um, and the main reason is that OBS didn't properly broadcast it correctly uh, when I streamed it. Uh, that was like four hours of footage just lost. Um, so I uh, no one really wanted, or I wasn't really exp explicitly asked to replay the rod route. Um, but I am glad that people are watching it and enjoying it on YouTube. Uh, but I won't be replaying it unless someone asks me uh, either on Twitter or on YouTube uh, just comment if you want to see that um, if not I'm just gonna continue on with the other routes um, so yeah uh, to recap on the routes route uh, this is spoilers uh, for it if you don't want to hear it uh, just click off from here um, and come back in like two minutes. Uh, his route, uh, I got the bad ending the first time. And uh, basically he just disappeared. Um, after that, we have no idea whether or not people retained memories of him. But yeah, he just dissolved into th thin air. And the good ending is that uh, Lucette and Rod would continue their relationship in secret. Because... Uh, they are not, although they're not blood siblings uh, related by blood, uh, they are still step siblings, and so that's a little incestual and probably not well liked to the people of uh, the kingdom. I forgot the kingdom's name. I was thinking Britannia, but like, no, that's uh, that's called Gias Universe. Anyways, we'll just continue on, and no, and skip, and skip, and we will do a set. And we'll just skip to where the, uh, the choice to go a certain route. Uh-oh, oh, okay, uh, I don't think this matters. Oh, it does matter. Oh, did I not go left? If I stop now, they'll definitely catch me and taking my coins may not be the worst thing they do at that end. Oh shit, I went the wrong way. <laughs> oh no! Nowhere to run, uh, nowhere to run now, girl. That's a new voice, right? What do I do? Oh, who are you, gentlemen? This is definitely not how you treat a lady. Huh? Who's there? They have the same voice, by the way. Shadow looms above us. Before I can blink, a person has jumped down in front of me. His body acts as a barrier between the two men and me. It's him! Who, who are you? Oh, me. I'm just a passing gentleman, concerned about a damsel in distress. Turn to the two men, his expression calm, his eyes flashing dangerously. Now, shall I teach you, gentlemen, a lesson? Oh wait, does he turn into a man during the night and in the morning or during the day he's a woman? He's got a sword! What? Come back here, you coward! The two of us can take him on! I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. Oh! This is way too much trouble for a little gold. That hurts my voice. Or my throat. Not my voice. Are you alright, my lady? You found her! The boy from yesterday. A little slow, aren't you, kid? 
Don't call me that. We used to know each other. I think I <laughs> mixed up Lucette's voice again. Look, I'm not having the best day. Cut me some slack. I don't, even, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel somewhat down in the sink. Basically, she passes out. Princess, princess! Lady Parfait will be able to help her. You're right, we need to move now before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Hang in there, princess. Wait, what? We got points for him? Well, I guess we're go- I guess we're going for, uh... Karma. Yeah, we'll go for Karma since we went that way. Uh, I don't think this choice matters. So we'll just do dot dot dot. And stay silent. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't think this matters either. But we'll go Karma. I find Karma sitting quietly at the bar. I thought he was the picture of elegance when I saw him at the toy shop, but he's really conceited. <laughs> I walk to oh, I walk over to where he is. Oh, Princess Lucette, you look stunning as usual in your work clothes. You must be mocking me, but it doesn't matter. I'm here because I want you to teach me about goodness. Not even a compliment. In, not even a compliment in return. I'm rather offended. Relax, Princess. I'm just teasing you, Sparkle. I noticed. Now, can you answer my question? Princess, you do so wound me. This is going nowhere. Maybe I should ask someone else. Wait, Princess. You made the right decision in coming to me, but I assure you. Best people, Princess, look beautiful. The way you look outside has to match what you have inside. How is that supposed to help me? Are you implying that I'm not beautiful? Of course not! Oh, my neck hurts. What the heck? <laughs> I only suggest that you smile more often. Smiling will not help me accomplish a good deed. And smiling has nothing to do with beauty. Oh dear. Hush. I'm afraid that's not true at all. People who are beautiful smile all the time. Like myself, Sparkle. He's not helping at all. Don't give me that look, darling. A real smile fits the heart and takes stress off the mind. Does it? And? <laughs> and? Well, in order to get too good, you must first change yourself. Make yourself more beautiful on the outside and the inside. I'm busy now. Doing this voice. I really don't know why I came to him for advice. What did I expect from such a flamboyant man? He's as shallow as a puddle of water. That's mean. Don't judge a book from its cover. I stare in horror at the floor. Gravel and sand are embedded between. Oh, this the this the broom, isn't it? Uh, let's go to Karma. Uh, I find Karma sitting at one of the tables, looking out a window. You're being quiet today. That what a queer sight. Oh, princess! Why would you so be so surprised to see me? Because it is an honor every time you visit me, Sparkle. Uh, let me decrease the audio a little bit more. Did you come for my advice? I want you to tell me how to do good deed. Why, my, we're so straightforward. What is he talking about? It's really simple. You just need to do something without strings attached. No strings attached. Yes. You need to do something for someone without asking them to pay you back. It is hard to wrap my head around doing such a thing. Why would I want to do something without needing to? Have you done such a thing for someone before? Uh, of course I have, princess. That was a long pause. <laughs> it was a long pause. It was only a thoughtful one. Right. Is that all? I believe so. That timid of wisdom ought to serve you well. Month has pa Wait, let me see if I can... No, I can't. 
I was gonna see if I could get rid of the cursor, cause uh, uh, for me it's a little annoying um, to see it on the broadcast. Uh, usually I try to hide it as much as possible, but as I'm reading, I notice it more and more going towards the middle. So I'm sorry about that. I just realized that now. A month has passed and I have yet to complete even one good deed. Not for lack of trying though. I have been asking around for advice on how to be a good person and received various answers. What makes someone good? I'd say being selfless. I think it's important that you consider another person's- Oh, this is everyone, isn't it? Patient- Oh, pay patient. Oh my god, guys, I just realized. Is Rod gonna disappear at the end of this? Oh, that's so sad. It's, it's okay, we're going for karma though. Oh, I am worried about Rod though. I decided to go search for karma as soon as I'm done with Mr. Broom. Or as soon as it's done with me. He should be sitting at the bar at the, or at the table. I find him at the usual table talking to Waltz. Was his hands on a box. Why, if it, it isn't the princess. Lovely morning, isn't it? It is, a, it is the same as any other. Nonsense. Every morning brings new opportunities. Right, Waltz? Sparkle? I guess so. Every day there's another chance for good deed, princess. Right. No clever comments today, princess. I do so enjoy them. Maybe coming to Karma was a bad idea. Is this an initial thought for everyone? I do love to stay and offer advice, but Walt and I better be off. We have work to do. Sparkle. You mean you're going to put me to work? Work? Parfait asked us to pick up some provisions for the tavern. She asked us, but in the end, it will be me carrying everything. You make a lady carry everything? Karma suddenly stops and whirls to look at me with wide eyes. Oh? I cannot say that I like that glimmer in his eyes. Well, how would you like to help Princess Lucette? I'm sure this would count as one of your good deeds. I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Oh, Walt, well, you're no fun. Helping, helping Karma carry things does not sound pleasant, but... I'll go! Truly? Oh my, Walt, it seems I will not be requiring your assistance today. Uh, Princess, are you sure? Perhaps this might be considered good. Besides, I'll finally get to leave this place for the first time since I've been here. I am sure. Uh, okay. Take good care of the Princess Karma. Of course, Sparkle. Is this new music? For the rest of the day, Karma takes me to a different shop. Takes me to different shops around the town, reading off a long list of giving and giving me coins to buy things. I notice that the townspeople treat me nicely when the two of us are together. I don't understand why everyone likes Miss Karma so much. But maybe it is because they don't really know him. Uh wait. I'm still confused about this. Is he transgender or is he just cross-dressing? Or is he a tom girl? I don't... I guess we'll just figure it out as we go. We stop in the middle of town and sit at the small cafe on the outskirts to take a break. It's because I'm confused by the pronouns that... uh. Lucetta is using here. Miss Karma and then know him. Uh, um, we stop in the middle of town instead of a small cafe. Miss Karma is this is still the picture of elegance. Why do you dress like a woman? Oh, here we go. Darling, not so loud. Why is this even a secret? It's related to my curse. I mentioned that before, didn't I? What was your curse again? Karma was the only Karma was the only person at the tavern who did not share what his curse was. Is knowing my curse even so important? You know what my curse is, so tell me what yours is. 
You dragged me around town to help you carry your things. Wait, let's send it all to work? But princess, those weren't even my things. They weren't mine either. Okay, I'll tell you, but though it is very sad. I don't think a curse is meant to be a very happy thing. I have the beauty's curse. It is what forces people to fall in love with me every time they see my handsome face. Wait, seriously? How's that a curse? Yeah! Is that really a curse? That does not seem awful at all. Terrible, isn't it? No, it's not! It is not terrible at all. I'm saving over the first one. Uh. No, not really. I don't think it's that terrible. You can work around it. You have your disguise. Yes, I suppose I do, don't I? People loving you isn't such a bad thing, is it? Everyone loves Miss Carlo. Meanwhile, I cannot get my father to look in my direction. I prefer a person to love me as I am, not because they are compelled to because of a curse. Uh, that's true. And you can't find your soulmate or SO or a real boyfriend, girlfriend purely by looks. I guess you could get laid. I mean, that's the only upside of it. But then, like, yeah. If you want, like, a real relationship, that'd be pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Depressing notion. Anyways, we'll just continue on. Uh, I can feel his eyes on me. I refuse to look at him, thinking that his gaze must be filled with judgment. <laughs> Princess, are you okay? Why wouldn't I be? You look a little lost in thought. I am fine. Still, it looks like I'm missing something. Is that really the entirety of his curse? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's the whole cross-dressing thing. But don't people fall in love with you when you're a woman as well? No, princess, that love is admiration or appreciation, sometimes lust. And when you're a man, they swarm to me like moths to light. It's all becomes suffocating. And there's an effect. The curse only affects women. It is a condition of the curse that they be a woman and that I be a man. It's part of the fairy tale. What's fairy tale? The one with... Oh! Karma suddenly stands up and points at a man selling red apple-like candies. He pulled me over, insisting that we try one. I try to bring up the cup, uh, subject to the curse again, but to no avail. Karma somehow manages to be distracted for the rest of the day and is able to effectively dodge my questions. Is Karma hiding something from me? Why would he? I thought pairing up meant to helping each other break our curses. And um, I'm also going to turn off the right choice indicator because I know I made the wrong choice there. But I don't want that to be in the back of my mind the entire time while I play this. Does he not want to break his curse? Oh, thank you so much, Lucette. We were in dire need of these supplies. I supervised her as well, didn't I? I don't know why I said it like that. Sparkle. Of course, dear. He didn't do anything. Princess, you wound me. It's the truth. But we had such a nice talk. You avoided half my questions. Karma lets out an exasperated sigh that becomes a very forced yawn. I'm going to bed. Today was a very tiring day. Please excuse me, darling. Sleep well. Sleep well, Karma. Oh, by the way, the last time I ended the stream or video, which was part three, I think? And that was at the end of... Or like in the middle of Rod's excursion or Lucia was doing going to a secret meeting in the chamber room or something like that. I did get a parfait or made my own parfait. I went out 
bought some yogurt and some uh, blueberries and strawberries and uh, yeah, made my own cafe. It was delicious. Anyways, uh, her name just reminded me of that. Um, Karma walks away, leaving me alone with Parfait. He's not, uh, he's not so bad, you know. I do not know why I agreed to work with him. Give him a chance, Lucette. I did not get a good, single good deed today. It's not just about the act, but about the intentions. Did Karma just use me then? I am tired. I'm going to bed. Tonight, I will rethink my partnership. No, we're not. We're going for him. This is a group effort. I barely sleep that night. When I wake the next day, my body is sore from carrying supplies around town than yesterday. The more I think about karma, the more my anger boils inside of me. How could I not have gotten a good deed yesterday? I decided to find them first thing in the morning. I see him at his usual table, once again staring out in the window. A dark aura seems to surround him, and I notice that no one is sitting next to him. Karma! He keeps staring outside, and his eyes are glassy. Karma! Oh, princess, good morning. It's far from a good morning. I did not sleep at all last night. What a, sh what a shame. His voice is surprisingly cold. His tone rather dismissive. I too was busy thinking about yesterday. You told me that helping you would maybe help me complete a good deed. I point at my necklace, which hasn't changed at all since I received it. Do you see? Not another piece. You get pieces added to your glass zipper? That's charming. I was thinking that pairing up with you was a bad idea. Huh! Princess, did you just say that you're paired up with me? I did. You must have known. Oh my. I just assumed that you wanted to help me. I didn't know you were pairing up with anyone. Oh, that's right. I never told him directly I wanted to partner up. Should I have? Well, it doesn't matter what I say anymore because I do not think you can help me. Princess, I can't help you do a good deed. You have to do them on your own. I cannot present you with op I can present you with opportunities, though. Opportunities? We start first by thawing out the ice around your heart. So even Karma is calling me the Ice Princess. At least I speak my mind and don't pretend to be someone I'm not. And I do not promise things I cannot deliver either. Princess, I do believe you're misunder- Misinterpreted. Uh, it's very hard to say misinterpreted in this voice, so I apologize. This is not my fault. Patience is a virtue. Now, if you could, I would like some time alone. I did not sleep well yesterday. Then, uh, who is this? Didn't sleep well. Oh dear, that makes three. All three of us. Laura? Oh god damn it. I turn around and see Rumpel around uh, up here at the front door. He strides toward the table with a confident grin on his face and takes another seat. Karma lets out a sigh. Fellow oh, man, what are you doing here? You flirt with a man once and he hates you, is that it? No, you flirt with a man, then you insult him unnecessarily. Oh, I thought that was all in good fun. Something about the expression on Rumpel's face tells me that that is not true at all. Are they always going to be at each other's throats now? What are you doing here, Rumpel? I couldn't help but overhear that you're looking for a prince, a uh, partner, Princess Sparkle. I thought I might offer my assistance, since I know that I can make you far happier than this fool over here. Would you like me to hit you again? What is the problem, sir? I only came to provide assistance where you could not. Rumpel turns to me, grabs my hand, and winks at me. Wink! Sparkle, sparkle! What do you say, princess? We could be wonderful partners, and in no time at all, I swear I would have your heart aflutter. 
Before I slap his hand away, Hoko <laughs> slaps him instead. I cannot help the surprise on my face. Would you like another slap? I am in no me mood for pleasantries today. I don't know how I ever mistook you for a lady. You are the most brutish man here. A slap for each cheek, darling. Would you like a third on your butt cheeks? Rumpel stands abruptly from the table and glares at Karma. I can almost see electricity bouncing between the two as they stare over my head at each other. I see Jurian I see Yurian walking toward us with a stern look on their face. I would never hurt a person unnecessarily. I don't resort to violence. My, that that gives me all the openings I need. <laughs> uh Wait, what did he say before? Oh boy. Well, let's slap him. I lean forward to slap Rumble from his blind spot. <laughs> oh, both of the men turn to stare at me. I see the red spot I left on Rumble's face and wince. I don't think I've ever slapped a person for anyone else before. My chest feels slightly heavy. Princess? You were being ridiculous. I have told you many times that I do not appreciate your flirting, and Karma doesn't either. Such a persistent and needs to be slapped a few times. Rumpel puts a hand to his cheek and stares at me distraught. You deserve that. All right, what's happening over here? Yurian comes to stand in front of us, her expression stern. Nothing. I was just showing myself out. Excuse me. Rumpel leaves and I'm alone with Karma. He slumps back down into his chair. After making sure that he won't do anything rash again, Yurin leaves us. I leave Karma sitting there by himself and return to the front of the tavern where Anis has more chores waiting for me. Today, I have to work as a server, which is still better than working with Mr. Broom. I don't know. Working with Mr. Broom builds character, I feel. The usual people are at the tavern and I overhear conversations as I work. At one point, Garland walks over to the bar and Anise serves him a drink. He looks sullen. I watch him curiously for a few moments. Then I notice he's staring at Yurian, who is talking sternly to two drunken men continuously clacking their bottles together at a table. If you make too much if you make too much of a scene here, you're gonna bother all the customers. But the same people are here all the time, eh? We're not bothering anyone, hun. I don't know what kind of accent that was. Garland looks so agitated. What's wrong with him? I wouldn't. I will not stand to have you talk. Call me that again. Loosen up, woman. You may have been a knight at the palace before, but you got no such title now. Garland stands up, and I can see silent anger in his eyes. A few people at the bar look up at him with worry. I may have no title, but I still demand respect. Uh, Sir Garland? Are, are you okay? He looks back at us, almost like he's coming out of a trance. I'm... I'm fine. Sorry about that, ladies. He sits back down, glancing once more at Yurian as she continues to speak to the men. They glance at Gar Garland warily, their expressions more somber. Why was he acting that way? Garland's usually more compu co co composed. Um, Princess, is this something on your mind? No. I brush all thoughts of what just transpired from my mind. As I return to my work, hours go by and my body protests to all the leaning I have to do. Even though I had to carry a lot around town yesterday, it was nice to be out for a while. Maybe I am better off helping him just to avoid the chores here. At least that stops me from being worked to the bone. 
Oh, princess, you're doing very well today. I always perform like this. But today, you're delivering everything really quickly. You mean to say that I don't perform well on other days? No, princess, I only mean to say that today your performance is even better than normal. Is that supposed to be a compliment? I walk away from Anise who stares at me sadly. If she wanted to give me a compliment, she could have said something that wasn't so backhanded. I don't think she meant it as backhanded. As the tavern clears for the day, I finally have time to sit down and relax. As I, t uh, as I am sitting here, uh, Waltz pulls up a chair and sits in front of me. Hello, princess. I heard from Anise that you're doing an excellent job at your job today. Uh, congratulations on improving. Uh, princess? So you're mocking me now, too? Uh, princess, I think you're taking things too seriously. The intention of compliment is to, well, compliment someone. We're not making fun of you. You are implying that I am not normally as good at this. We never said you weren't good at this, only that you were better today. Let me give you an example. I put on a sh puppet show for kids. Sometimes the children come to me and say that the show was even better than usual. So the peop so the children are telling you that your shows aren't normally satisfactory. Not at all. The children always smile, regardless of whether they really like the show. So long as you're trying your best, that's all that matters. The people in the bar are always smiling when you deliver food to them, aren't they? No, no one likes me here. Maybe if you smiled, they would smile back. I am not going to smile for any of them. I don't owe them anything. You don't need to owe anyone a smile. Any smile that isn't owed is fake. Princess. I am leaving, Waltz. I want some time to myself. I walk upstairs to my bedroom, pointedly ignoring this look of sadness on Waltz's face. Oh, poor Waltz. I've been sleeplessly laying on bed for hours. Sometimes I hear the sounds of people walking through the hallway. Who would be up at a time like this? I need to leave and get some fresh air. It is eerily quiet at night. I stop when I hear faint sounds coming from outside. What was that? Let's go outside. Oh, I did say I needed some fresh air. No point in backing out now. I walk to the front door. Princess! Whoop! I turn and see Delora looking at me with amusement flickering in her eyes. Princess, what are you doing? Getting some fresh air? It's dangerous at night, you know. You can't just keep me inside like some caged bird. I didn't say you need to stay inside. I just said it's dangerous. You might need to get your ears checked. Then there won't be any problem with me going out right now. Princess, you only heard what you want to hear. You can't go outside without an escort. I'm not going that far. Before Delora can stop me, I walk to the front door and head in the direction of the sounds. You must be the most disobedient princess I've ever met. You must be the most annoying witch. Delora lets out an undignified snort as she catches up to me. Fine then, we'll go on this little night stroll together. Delora's a good egg. Delora and I eventually find ourselves in the forest. This is a new background. I already love it. Also, what was his name? The name of the artist who did this. Hold on, I want to give him a shout out properly. Um, come on, come on, where is it?
Hmm. Ah, mano. Ah, cadê, né? Você é um artista independente. Onde é ele? Onde é ele? Onde é ele? Não, não é ele. Ah, here it is. Uh, the backgrounds were made by DAO space DAO. He's a 2D background artist. And uh, his art station name is DAONEYUNG. He's from Saigon, Vietnam. And yeah, you should check out his art. He's a really good background artist. Um, he also does character art. Or like concept character art, but like his his background art is just absolutely beautiful. You should really check him out. Um, so yeah. Oh shit. Oh 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 oh. Delora and I eventually find ourselves in the forest. No sounds. It sounds like metal against a uh, metal against metal. Well, I guess. Well, I guess. With you being partnered with Karma, you would find out eventually. Excuse me. I get the answer to my question when we walk through the trees and come into a clearing. I finally see where the sounds are coming from. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I right clicked. I didn't know right click went to the menu. Two men stand in the clearing, swords clashing. One of the men is Garland, who is poised with his sword. It takes me a moment to realize that the other is Karma, who isn't in the dress. So it was he who was with Waltz that night. Neither he nor Garland notice us at first. Princess, you're staring. Of course I am. What is all this? A practice session. Karma is a very talented swordsman, and he practices at night with either Urian or Garland, depending on who's not on patrol. Karma can use a sword that well. Quite King had told me that only knights could have such skill. Just who is Karma? Oh, if it isn't the princess. Damn, he looks good. Oh, shit. It's, the, it's a manly voice? Uh, his voice is, his voice is nothing like the feminine voice I always hear from him. Karma actually sounds like a man. I notice, notice him looking at me in between his strikes with a little smile. How does he remain so composed and steady with such a distraction? Princess. Karma quickly finds an opening in Garland's hesitant stance and then pins him to the ground with his sword, still smiling. To be distracted is to die, Garland. Oh, I know. They have the same voice! <laughs> Shit! Anyway. The ability to see distractions and then put them in the back of your mind is one every night should hone. You must know everything that is happening around you, but only deal with the pertinent things. Yes, sir. Karma straightens sword in hand. Moments later, Garland stumbles to his feet and gives an obedient bow. Karma nods at him before sheathing his sword. A slow melancholy begins to creep into my heart. For some reason, seeing this sword practice makes me nostalgic. Though I'm not sure why. What are you practicing for? To protect, princess. Knowing the sword is the same as knowing the shield. It is a mean of protect. It is a means to protect. To protect. I think I remember having this kind of conversation with them before. Flashback. I can. I can never figure out how to counter an opponent when they're mere inches from my face. My commander called that one the enemy's kiss. A standoff where you lack eyes lock on your opponent because of the proximity. The best way to counter that is to feint the sword in the opposite direction. It throws your opponent off because they're not looking. 
Uh, that makes sense. Oh, shit. But the enemies kiss. What a name. It seems so dramatic for a sword move, doesn't it? Sword fight is dramatic, though, isn't it? Isn't the most effective sword play not to be that flashy? Princess! Didn't notice you were there. Good morning, Princess. Well, the most effective sword play can't be predicted. The commander says it needs to be robust. And quick. Sometimes I sword play can look like dancing though, which is why some think that professionals are flashy. That seems unnecessary. Everyone has their own methods, their own skills. All of us knights fight for different reasons as well. Just like artists! Except not fighting, drawing. Or musicians! Except not drawing, playing music. I guess they, they're all in the same boat. Artists and uh, musicians. Musicians can be artists and artists can be musicians. Just with the different mediums. Anyways, isn't it to protect all of us in the palace? Well, yes, we don't we protect oh, but we protect everyone in the castle for different reasons princess The knights protect for different reasons. I turned to karma But karma, but karma, you're not a knight No, I am most definitely not but since Garland and Urian begged me to teach them, I have somehow become their mentor. There's no way Garland and Urian would do that. After all, the both of them were the best knights in the NGO before they were stripped of their titles. Karma actually speaks the truth. Urian and I really did have to get down on our knees and beg him to instruct us. What? Is Karma really so talented? Oh god. So, you are finally impressed with me. What do you think, princess? I am the picture of elegance in this outfit, aren't I, Sparkle? You know, I don't know why you and Rumpel fight so often. You really are very similar. Don't compare me to that fool. He has no class. And he cannot fight. Uh... Just because you come from a different background doesn't mean he has less class. That's true. So the reason you were so tired today because you do these practices at night. Ho oh, ho! I suppose I have been caught red-handed. Why does this have to be a secret? Does it have to do with Karma's curse? But he's not in his disguise now. Does he lose his gentle dolls at night? And then... Regain his uterus? Okay, I'm gonna stop. Uh... We could have been working on breaking our curses today, but no! You decided that staying up late into the night and practicing was more important. That was probably why you were grumpy this morning. Well, our protection is vital, don't you think? Garland, you are at the palace. How is it that Karma possesses more skill with the sword than you? Princess! Karma is special, Princess. He is more talented with the sword than a lot of other people. And I do pride myself on being a splendid instructor, Sparkle. But never fear, Princess. I will help you dispel your curse. After all, you did just suggest that we were still partners. Can you really help me with my curse? But how will we do that by just pretending, presenting opportunities? We will try again tomorrow, darling. But for now, Garland and the High have some more work to do. This time, Garland, do not lose focus. Yes, sir. The sound of swords carries through the night air, and for a while, I stand with Delora watching the two men fight. Karma chides Garland often, telling him that his concentration is waning. Karma's a good swordsman, probably even better than the palace knights. His nimble sword play repeats again and again in my head, even when I return to the tavern for the night. <gasps> Is Lucette gonna try sword play? Lucette, I've told you that the knights are our 
that the knights are an unruly bunch. But mother, they're so much fun to watch. They are dangerous, Lucette. Any person with a sword has the potential to use it on you. But, but father says those knights are supposed to protect me. That they are, as that is their order. But as people, that, but as people, they may not be so good, Lucette. Not so good. The king has the king has told me that the knights are meant to use swords to protect you, but you cannot trust them completely. Even though father said they would keep me safe. Sometimes the people we trust are the most deceitful, and the man with a sword has a weapon to use against you, no matter what he says. Be wary that he can turn on you. Haven't I told you before that you should not trust people? But my knights are... Even knights can be treacherous, Lucette. Do not trust a man with a sword. He can be dangerous. Yes, mother, I understand. Try to understand, my sweet. I only want you to be safe. Yes, I understand. Robot, Lucette, understand. Girlfriends. Yuri in, if you don't come at me, you'll like you truly mean to stab me, you'll never let the hit. Uh, y yes, ma'am. Uh y yes, sir. It has been about two weeks since I first start karma here in the forest with practicing with Garland. I've come here every night since then, though I never stay long because uh, I've come here every night since then, though I never stayed long as Karma since I actually have work to do in the mornings. Alright, here I come. The two swords clash and Karma laughs as he throws Yuri back and taps her lightly on the shoulder with his sword. That makes four hits. And that one was easy. Is that the best you can do, Yuri -in? I noticed that every time Karma practices with Yurian, he is in the Miss Karma disguise. He said it is because of the curse and because he does not want Yurian to fall in love with him. Wait, what? Isn't he being overdramatic? I thought someone like Yurian could fall in love with Karma. He's subtle and quiet. Garland tells me you're usually good at that. Uh, I am, sir. And why the exception today? Uh, sir. I'm just gonna do a normal voice for her. I'm just bastard bastardizing the southern accent, I feel. Uh, darling, it wouldn't have been to be because of the way I'm dressed, would it? Are you still not used to it? Well, <laughs> that's a giveaway, I guess. Camera shake. Hit on the nail on uh, hit the nail on the head, have I? It is not very chivalrous to hit a lady, of course, but that logic applies to men as well. And the enemy is an enemy, Jurian, even if your enemy is a delf delicate flower like myself. <laughs> delicate flower. Hey, Jurian, you should hit him on the head for that. But princess, he is not delicate at all. Yurian laughs and I scowl at her. Is she laughing at me? You and Karma seem to get along. I doubt it. Oh, princess, you wound me. You always say that. You wound me where Yurian's blade cannot. Something flashes in Yurian's eyes. As she readies her sword again, Karma stands ready as Yurian rushes at him with her sword. Cling! Their swords clash again. I wonder. Karma, your back's open. Karma turns. Yurian taps him on the shoulder and laughs loud. I did it. Single hit. Looks like you have your weakness too, Karma. No, it wasn't the weakness. It was a lack of sleep catching up to me. Why do you listen to me? He told Garland the other day that it was crucial that I only listened and watched the most important things. Alright, practice is over for now. I can see Garland coming for his practice. 
Kara walks to the corner to have a drink. I should probably head back to the tavern soon, but there is something I want to see first. On their way back, Irian gives a solemn nod to Garland. She pauses to say something to him and then looks at me, noticing my vague curiosity. I was just mentioning what a good swordsman Karma is. I've seen him fight, and Karma is a good swordsman. There's no doubt about that, yet is practicing with him really so special? He is fast on his feet and quick with his reactions. He is an excellent person to train under, even better than most of the commanders at the palace. I can second that. Even better than Ross. Remember him? Who the fuck is Ross? The first commander we trained on- oh! The first commander we trained under, the one that punished slow learning with extra exercises. You always had to do more exercises than I did, something about you being distracted. I, I was watching the way you swung your sword to make sure you didn't hurt yourself. You've always been overprotective. Well, I love you. I mean, they both suddenly stop to look at Karma, who is smiling slyly on the side. Why does he have that look on his face? Well, that's a sign. We can't keep the commander waiting. Garland shakes his head, ex his expression snapping back into something more serious. Right. To exchange quick farewells before Yurian waves and steps out of the clearing, leaving Garland with Karma. Here in the dress today. Are you two really so opposed to hurting me when I'm in the dress? Or are you worried about ruining it? No. It's just so strange. You move so well, even in a long dress. But yes, Irian did mention almost stepping on it once. Impossible! I am the picture of elegance. Uh, of course, sir. Kama shrugs Garland's comment off. The two ready their swords, then get right into practice. Irian takes... Yurian has taken over Garland's patrol now so that Garland can get in some practice time. So Garland, have you told Yurian yet? No. The conversation that Karma always has with Garland is the real reason I stay behind to watch him practice. I don't understand why Garland answers Karma question if doing so makes him feel so depressed. Will you ever show anything to her, Garland? Why don't you just confess to her already? Karma lands an easy hit on Garland, who sighs in response. Whenever Garland talks about Yurian, he gets distracted. I don't understand his feelings at all, but seeing him remain quiet frustrates me. Yurian is talented and poised. I could never be good enough for her. Oh, Garland, you good-looking motherfucker. You'll never win a woman's heart if you don't compliment her looks as well, Garland. Well, she's pretty too. Beautiful. And then there's... me. What? I can see why you wouldn't tell her. That's just... the... meanest thing. Aren't they both knights? Haven't been... Haven't they been training together for a long time? Oh, maybe he's just friend zone. Let's say something to her. Well, I... All you do is talk about her! Even Karma says your concentration is lacking because she's always on your mind. So just tell her! If she does not like you back, then that's it! If she doesn't like me back... Confessions are hard, princess. Very tedious. You're only saying that because you're dramatic about everything. That may be true. The very nature of love is dramatic, darling. Smarkle. Smarkle? Sparkle? It's the same thing as sparkle with an M. But enough idle chattel, sir. Chattel. Chatter. Let us continue our training. I end up staying longer than intended, but by the time I consider returning to the tavern, Garland and Karma are wrapping up for the night. I have a question for Karma, so I wait until Garland leaves for, before approaching him. You're still here, princess. Weren't you see 
Were you seeking out alone time with me by chance? I have enough of that every day when we run errands. I just have a question for you. You always come to the right person. What can I do for you, Princess Lucette? Sparkle. You ask Garland the same question every time you train, and he always tells you that he cannot confess. Karma nods in acknowledgement, but his attention is on his sword. He inspects it carefully before sheathing it. It frustrates me. You're frustrated? Yeah. That look of his always annoys me. Oh my. It is annoying. Did you, uh, did you want me to ask why he won't confess? Because you're so frustrated. Yes. I suppose after almost two months, I do not know why you're a bit better. Wait, what? I think I misread that. I suppose after almost two months, I do know you a bit better. Oh, okay. I did misread it. You do not know anything about me. And I don't know anything about karma either. Confessing isn't easy, dear Lucette. Surely you must realize that the possibility of rejection is a significant deterrent. But, you, but if you never ask, you never get an answer, and the stress of worrying stays with you and ruins everything. Why are you staring at me? Is that the reason you're so blunt, princess? Blunt? You're far more blunt than I am. Princess Lucette, you truly are amusing. You're as sharp as a knight's blade. I am not amusing. That is a matter of opinion, darling. Sparkle. He's really insufferable, and yet I still come to him for advice. The scariest part about a confession is the possibility of, re 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 of rejection. Can you imagine loving someone and then finding out that they don't feel the same about you? My thoughts shift to the king. My chest tightens. Princess Lucette. Karma reaches out a hand to brush off. Brush a strand of hair out of my face. I slap it away without realizing. He pulls his hand back with a gentle sigh. My apologies, princess. No, I cannot imagine. No? Loving someone and finding out they do not feel the same way. I always knew my father never loved me. My understanding is different from what Karma is referring to. Besides, I no longer hold any love in my heart for the king. I have already given hope on, given up hope on him. Right? No. Deep down. She definitely wants. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't? What? What child doesn't want? love from their parent it's a good thing you haven't experienced a rejected love princess it is the one of the worst feelings karma asks to be alone so i returned to the tavern by myself that night damn look at that beautiful beautiful man beautiful animated man uh not animated the anime Do not want a uh, bit. I do not. Uh, ha! I do not know why I agreed to this when nothing changes. Today I am once again out in town with Karma, running errands. Since we've been partners, he insists on me coming with him every day. Why do you need a new dress? Because a lady needs all kind of new dresses. Air closet variety is key when you want to make a good impression, Sparkle. Why would you want to make a good impression on people in a disguise? A disguise is meant to conceal you. It does not exist to be flaunted. Oh no, darling. I only wear the disguise to stop the curse from working on people. It's not really meant to conceal anything but the fact that I, I am a man. Being doted on by a married woman or by a woman in love with another man is especially troubling. Oh yeah, that, that, that could be... That's understandably bad. Is the curse really that powerful? Karma leads me over to the dress store and our conversation pauses when he goes to the store owner to give specifications for our new dress. When we leave, Karma suggests going to some place to reward me for all my hard work. Ice cream! 
You're treating me! Why, what are you, darling? You've been helping me for a while now. What's this feeling? Gratitude? Karma does owe me for everything I've done for him, so why do I feel like this? You know, it would be much easier for you to just tell me carry bags. Oh, there. Let's buy one of those cupcakes, Sparkle. Oh, cupcake. Cupcake sounds so good, too. Huh. <sighs> Karma cuts through my suggestion easily. Does he really dislike work so much that he'd rather pay me off for helping him? I don't know, man. Being paid in cupcakes is pretty good, in my opinion. Karma takes me to a stand showcasing all kinds of cupcakes. There are some with colored frosting, others with fancy decorations. Some are especially, some are especially eye-catching, like a bright blue cupcake decorated in little stars. Catch anything catch your fancy ladies? All of them, actually. Alas, I do not think eating them will... Eating them all would be a good idea for my diet. What do you think, princess? We'll share one. Just one? No! Oh, I turn my back to the cupcakes, which I realize are big enough to share between two people. What the hell? Are you sure these are cupcakes? Maybe not a cake? cake? Uh, I'm... I am choosing one for myself, but one that Karma would like, I guess. He is treating me, but... Two cupcakes catch my eyes. One has a little, li tiny little creature sitting on the top of the frost ring. It seems to be a little lizard of sorts, though it is strange the colors remind me of Karma's dress. The other cupcake is decorated with little white chocolate pearls. <gasps> that sounds amazing! Those pearls are small and somehow... Cute, but Karma might like the other cupcake. Oh, so it's between those two. Which would you like? Lizards, cause Karma likes it. I'll have that one. The one with... Oh my, is that a chameleon? A chameleon? Oh, it is a chameleon. Oh, that's adorable, sir. We'll take one of those, Sparkle. I was thinking he'd like it for the colors, not the chameleon. Whatever that is. Let's go enjoy this somewhere, shall we, Sparkle? Karma leads me to the middle of the plaza and the two of us find a table. He walks off to get a fork and knife before returning and handing me... Handing a set to me. Do we really need a fork and knife to eat a cupcake? So fancy. So before we got your dress, and you distracted me with cupcakes, we were talking about your curse. Were we? It's not an interesting topic. I was glad we would gotten off on that tangent, to be honest. Why don't you want to talk about it? You have your secrets just as I do, princess. But the whole point of pairing up is to help each other with our curses. Princess, you want to help me? Only because it is necessary that I help them so they can help me. I haven't no I haven't made any progress helping you though. You said you would provide me with opportunities. I'm not very good at that, am I? I'm sorry, princess. Well, I don't think I've done anything for you either. But princess, you've been helping me for the last few days, weeks. Whether or not that is an obligation, you are still in good company. Good company? No one has ever told me that before. They only chide me for being difficult to speak with. Oh, so cute! Also, that is a cupcake. That is very small. Um, that would not fill me up. I would probably need maybe five or six. Oh, don't eat that lizard though. Or the... Chameleon, don't eat the chameleon, so cute with that derpy eye. Karma starts cutting the cupcake, his knife sliding through frosting and cake with ease. I've, I've definitely never seen such refined manners for such a simple dessert. What was your life before the pr uh, uh, what was your life bef like before the crust, princess? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what was your life before the cr curse, princess? need to tell you any of that. 
No, it's not necessary, but I am curious. Would I be doing a good deed and telling him? I don't think so. How about we trade off fact for, for fact? You give me a story today and I'll give you one tomorrow. What makes you think I am interested in your life? Well, you do keep asking me about my curse. Only because we are working on breaking our curses. Okay then, we won't talk about the past or any secrets. We can talk about this cupcake instead, it's Sparkle. What? Why does he always insist on changing the subject? Karma cuts the chameleon on top in half. No, chameleon! I notice that he gives himself the head, which is a lot cuter while I get stuck with the tail. Chameleons are little lizards that can blend into their surroundings. Is he willing to go this far to avoid the subject? When I was a child, my father used to call me a chameleon. What? I hid a lot to avoid my responsibilities. Oftentimes, no one could find me, not my father nor my servants. If he had servants, then that would make him a noble? One day, I was searching for a mythical creature in their garden. Then I come. Then I came upon a chameleon. It was this small, silly little lizard. But I'd only found it because I was looking for something fantastic. The lizard on the cupcake does seem... Does not seem to be all that fantastic. My father explained what it was to me and then he started calling me his siddle, silly little chameleon. It was ridiculous, but he said I was always good at hiding, so it suited me. What is it, princess? It seems like you are still good at hiding. You hide behind your disguise and keep many secrets. I suppose I am still a chameleon, chameleon then, not a comedian. I am most definitely not a comedian. I don't think that nickname makes any sense. Sometimes they don't have to. Nicknames don't have to make any sense to be endearing, princess. Can we please just get back to the subject at hand? Yes, this cupcake. <laughs> if you insist on sharing a story for a story, then I will tell you something about me. Oh? You didn't seem the type who want to share. I normally do not see any reason for sharing things about my past now. My mother once told me that to confide in someone else was a weakness. But more than that, I was always worried that others would judge me. No one has ever wanted to listen to me. I know enough about other opinions to... A way to know that they think I'm the one at fault. Always. I wouldn't judge you, princess. I mean, I wouldn't judge you for not wanting to say anything to me. If I don't, I divulge nothing to you after all. A story for a story. That's the deal, right? I expect you to keep it. A rather a fact for a fact. It's not like I have to tell him everything, just something about myself. I will tell you about my life at the palace. It's not as if it's a secret, though I doubt Karma would understand. Ever since mother died, the palace has been a cold place. Why the surprise? Is it because you see Emily and Rod and assume we are all one big happy family? I do have to admit that Princess Emily seems quite gentle. Rod is quite quiet, but he seems like an honorable man. When I saw you and the princess at the dress store, Princess Emily seemed very nice, is she not? Kindness is fragile at best. She far tries far too hard for it to be of genuine. Her insistence is irritating. I have never wanted to be friends with her. Hmm. The king took a second wife after my mother died. It's as if she never mattered to him. Karma is silent and I continue to talk. My emotions loosening my tongue. I had meant to stop there, but the words kept coming. The only one who has ever showed any affection in the palace was my mother. The king never paid much attention to me in the first place, but she treats Rod and Emmeline far better than she was, than he was. But he treats Emmeline and Rod far better than he has ever treated me. What was your mother like? All of my fun 
fondest memories are of her. She has always taught. She was always with me in the palace, teaching me right from wrong. She taught me how not to show rudeness, who to speak with. Who to speak with? Needless conversation is useless. People are often likely to lead you astray. That was the reason I never saw any reason to speak with the townsfolk. Will you judge me as everyone else does? No, princess. I was not. I'm not judging you. Just a little sad. Sad? Why would you be sad? It sounds like you lived an empty life. It was not an empty life. But it sounds as if your mother separated you from everyone. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't as if the townsfolk would have accept, would have accepted me anyway. Mother said they were not to be trusted. Princess, about your mother. I will not hear you speak of mother that way. No, I only had a question about about your mother. Karma coughs, and I pause to stare at him as he clears his throat. What is it? This? Oh, gods. I hear the change immediately. His voice lower, far lower, the soft gentleness gone. Karma puts his hand to his throat and grumbles. Karma's voice is teetering on the edge of sounding unmistakably male. I've always wondered how he was able to change his voice, but I always forget to ask him about it. What happened to your voice? Oh, it's Miss Karma. I see a young market girl approaching us. She looks at Karma adoringly. I've always wanted to speak with you, Miss Karma, ever since you commented me my dress that one time in the dress store. Your dress is lovely today, as always, Miss Karma. Karma? Miss Karma, are you okay? I am quite fine. Wait, what? Oh. I cannot help but giggle as the girl takes a step back, looking shocked by Karma's now deep voice. Karma curses again in his deep voice before forcing a bright smile on his face. Excuse me, I am feeling quite under the weather. I notice that he is trying to change the pitch of his voice, but the highness is only annoying rather than soothing, soothing now. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Karma turns to me urgently, but I am too amused to offer any sort of assistance. What is it, Miss Karma? Karma's smile is forced, and his eyes are glaring at me. I laugh once again, not able to help myself. His expression softened, but only slightly. Now let's help him out. I think we had better begin with it. I think we better... Ah, I think we had better get going. Karma nods his head. I'll have explaining to do if we just sit here. Is there anything I can do to help you two? No, obviously not. Uh, I'm sorry. He doesn't look amused. Why? I'm only trying to get us out of here faster. Leaving. Curtsy. He takes my hand and curtsies politely to the girl as he pulls me away. Karma, you sound sick. It's run out. Run out. The potion that Parfait makes for me. I must have talked too much. You talk too much? What the fuck? Karma puts a finger to his lips as we stroll through town. He shakes his head, making it clear he won't speak to me until later. When we arrive at the tavern, it is already dark. Karma pauses and turns to look at me. What? You have a nice smile, Princess Lucette. I am, I am glad I could make you laugh. Well, of course I laughed. You sound ridiculous! It's worth sounding ridiculous just to see you smile. You and Rumpel really are the same. The comment doesn't faze him. He smiled widely as he leaves for his room. I'm glad I can make you laugh. I cannot get those words out of my head even though I'm supposed to be resting for the night. I think I should go see Karma 
I should see if Karma's practicing with Urian and Garland. I leave my room, go downstairs to the reception room. Uh, Dolores and Parfait let me go to the forest alone, alo uh, at night alone. Now that since they know that I'm meeting up with Karma, Parfait is in the reception room tonight reading a book. I was always told reading in the dark was bad for your eyes. Oh, princess, I didn't see you. I noticed. Uh, I noticed that she's closed the book, and I can now wait. I noticed that she's closed the book, and I can now read the cover. She's reading Cinderella. That's my fairy tale curse. The Great War has caused. The Great War was caused by the fairy tales, right? Yes, that's right. And yet you were reading one. The curses are based off of these fairy tales, after all. But why are you reading Cinderella? My curse isn't anything like the fairy tale. It's reversed. True, but the morals remain the same. In order to become Cinderella, you must be good like her. Sir, Cinderella had everything handed to her by her fairy godmother. I had everything taken away. Cinderella, have you truly had everything taken away from you? Compared to what I used to have, what I have now might as well be so nothing. You have friendships and people who enjoy your company. No one in this tavern enjoys my company. Are you sure about that, princess? I think you just have difficulty trusting that we all like you. Like me? Why would you like me? You've become like family here. I haven't even been here that long. It doesn't matter. Everyone here at the Martian is family. Family? You were saying that everyone at the Martian is like family. Princess, you're one of my boarders. You're more than just a regular here. You live here with us. So like I said, you're family. I speak more with the people here than I've ever spoken to my own family. And my voice is breaking now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me take a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> in this, in the palace, I was always alone. The only person I could speak with was Fritz. Are you going to watch Karma practice? I nod in response. Be safe, princess. As I head to the door, I recall what happened earlier today. Parfait, what does this potion mean make for Karma? Oh, you mean the potion I make to change his voice? He begged me to help him when he first designed his disguise. Karma makes a beautiful woman, but he didn't think the illusion would be complete without a convincing voice. You know how picky it is. Something else on your mind, princess? Karma hides his curse, but you must know the conditions for breaking it, don't you? Parfait doesn't answer. Or are you also keeping it a secret? Princess Lu said, not everyone likes to talk about their curse. I think it would be better if you ask Karma directly. I just don't understand why he won't tell me everything when I am just trying to help him. Just as you think your good deeds are difficult, there is also something about Karma's curse that he can't come to terms with. I put my hands to my necklace around my neck. I still haven't performed any good deeds. Can I really do this? I am going now. I walk to the front door and into the forest. I decide not to think about all this, at least not until later. I wish I wish this was all simpler and that karma wasn't cloaked in so many secrets. Oh, great. Creepy mom again. Mother, I went to the town today. Oh, I told you not to go into town. Did your father take you? He told me that it'd be fun. And was it? No, everyone looked really angry at me and I don't know why. I told you, haven't I, dearest one? The townsfolk are jealous of you. Jealous? They are bitter about their lot in life because... And because of that, they will seek to use you for your status. You cannot trust them, Lucette. You cannot trust anyone but me. Trusting others will only lead you to heartbreak, Lucette. You need only trust me because I will never hurt you. Hi, 
I have been at the Martian for a couple months now and I still haven't managed to do a single deed. Good deed. Today I went out to town with Waltz to buy ingredients for a parfait. The two of us have been very quiet, which is uncharacteristic for Waltz. Prin princess? What? Did Karma explain why he wasn't coming with you today? Princess. Does Waltz not like how- Does Waltz not like my company? Is that why he's asking why he had to fill in for Karma? He said he was tired. Oh. Waltz turns his head, his eyebrows furrowing in confusion. The town feels very different today. It does? I feel as if people are watching us. How can you tell? With practice, I have a lot of eyes on me when I'm doing my puppet shows after all. Even before then, I was used to being watched, I guess. That's a little creepy. Before you were cursed, why? Hmm, well, I guess I was more conspicuous as an adult, I guess. An adult, all right. You have a Neverland curse. You remember. Yes, I have the Neverland curse. I told you what that was in the tavern once. You were stuck in as a child when you should be a man. Right. It's a little inconvenient, but I've gotten used to it. Waltz is so much more straightforward about his curse than karma. The two of us go into a store where we find the little cups that Parfait asked us to buy. After I pay, Waltz automatically picks up the bags. This help is nice for a change. I have become so accustomed to carrying the bags on my own. So, have you made any progress on your good deeds? You can see from my necklace that I have not. But, you've changed. I still don't know how I've changed at all. Karma hasn't taught me anything about doing good. Sometimes, in order to be good, you need to realize that something's about yourself first. Maybe Karma's not so bad at helping you with that. He is selfish, fanboy, and acts as if the whole world revolves around him. But you're still partnered with him. I am. I am okay with Karma's company. Most of the people judge and shun me. But Karma hasn't done that and he's even mentioned m enjoying my company. I have become more tolerant of him. I'm sorry about that. I clicked accidentally. Oh, princess. Walt's eyes light up and I see him pointing ahead to a crowd of people gathered around the center of town. A woman stands in the middle of the crowd telling people's fortunes. We should so we should go see if we can get our fortune stolen. Come on. The crowd around the woman only grows larger until nearly half of the plaza has been taken up. I find myself pushed around in the crowd as I try to follow Waltz. The crowd is dense though, and in no time at all I have lost him. Waltz! I call for him, but I do not see him over the dunces of the people in front of me. I will wait for him at the outskirts of the crowd. He should be able to find me. Make my way out of the crowd and to the edges of an alleyway. Oh god. But Waltz does not appear. Ten minutes go by and I consider walking back into the crowd when I hear a voice behind me. Are you looking for a woman? Uh, are, are you looking for someone, madam? I feel someone grab my hand. I slap them away and take a step back. When I find when I turn, I find a man standing behind me in the alleyway. Didn't mean to startle you. What do you want? I want to help you return to the palace, Princess Lucette. What? You know who I am. I do, Princess, and I can lead you back to the palace. Who are you? Someone who's working for the king. But the king doesn't remember me. The only people who remember exactly are witches, fairies, and those with a curse. So who exactly is this man? You're lying. Princess, how, how, why would I ever lie to you? Now come, I'm sure everyone at the palace will be very glad to see you. The man grabs my hand roughly and begins trying to pull me, and trying to pull me through the alleyway. The first thing I try to do is scream, but the man clamps my free hand over my mouth, his free hand over my mouth. The crowd is getting farther from us, and no one can see us in the shadows. Princess, I swear on my oath I'm bringing you back to the palace. Uh, hell no, we're fighting back. I have to fight back! I can still drop people's attention to me. 
I try to squirm my way out of the man's arm, but it does not work. He chuckles lightly at me until I elbow him, elbow him in the stomach. For a few moments that I am free, to, I try to run, but all too soon the man grabs me again with the same punishing grip over my mouth and nose to stop me from screaming. You're a real feisty one, ain't ya? I feel like I might faint. In one last attempt to get free, I tug at the man's hand with my own and manage to shift it just enough until I can bite down on it. Ow! The man screams in pain, his grip finally loosening. I can hear him curse as I run away from him. A few minutes later, I realize that I've gone in the wrong direction. I soon come to the dead end in the alleyway I can see, and I can hear the man running up behind me. What is this I see before me? I look up to see Karma standing on the rooftop right above us in his disguise holding a sword, a broad grin on his face. Madam, you might hurt yourself playing with that sword. You might want to put that down. What's this, sir? Do you feel threatened by me? You should. Karma jumps down from the building and raises his sword in front of him. His eyes are angry, his earlier jovial personality falling away. Anyone that attacks a lady has to pay for the crime. Karma rushes forward, moving faster than I can see. Even in his long dress, the glint of a sword causes the man to fall backwards, loosening his grips on me. I step back from the man's hold and watch as Karma points a sword at the man's neck. Now I have a sword and you do not. Do you really want to test your luck, sir? This isn't worth it. The man runs off, leaving me alone with Karma in the alleyway. What's this? You are a lot cockier than just a few moments ago. I breathe out slowly as relief washes over me. Princess! Uh, princess! Waltz approaches from where the man had run. So, did you meet the coward fellow on your way here? I bumped into a man who looked as if he was running away from death. Oh my, I feel oddly accomplished. Karma and Waltz's voices become faded and indistinct as my vision blurs. I am suddenly light on my feet as all the adrenaline from alert earlier had dissipated into thin air. I feel tired. Why is this deja vu? This happened the second time? Fran uh, princess! Before I collapse, I feel arms pulling me back up. Rest easy, Princess Lucette. Close my eyes and fall into blackness. When I wake up, Anise is setting the tray of food down on my bedside table. She does not notice that I rise slowly from bed. Anise! Oh, Princess, you're up. We were worried about you. Lady Dolores and Lady Parfait said you were just out of... You were just out because of shock, but still. How long have I been asleep? Just a few hours, princess. Don't worry about the chores for now. Lady Dolores says that you're that if you're feeling better again, you can use Mr. Prue. <laughs> Man, that's that's brutal, Dolores. <laughs> Wanna just use magic? Oh, you know what? Straight, fine. Just think about using Mr. Prue. Gives me a headache. Where are Karma and Waltz? Waltz is scouting the town looking for the man that captured you. And Karma? I think he might be in his room, Princess. He's got patrol tonight, so he's resting a little bit. If he has patrol tonight, that must mean he was resting this morning too. How did he know I needed help? Uh, did you need anything, Princess? No. No, I'm going to visit Karma. What? To thank him? However, he knew if Karma hadn't been there, things wouldn't have ended so well. Yes. That's sweet, That's sweet princess. Oh, Lady Dolora wants to, wants to talk to you about what happened when you're feeling up to it. Okay. I wait until Anise leaves the room before I follow after her. It is only after I exit my room that I realized I do not know where Karma's room is. Anise must have assumed that I already knew with us being partners and all. It's fine. I don't need Anise's assistance for this. I can find that Karma's room on my own. And then she gets lost. It takes me some time, but eventually I find a room with his name on it. Uh, in careful flowery letters. 
It suits him. I simply open the door without thinking to knock. Oh shit. <laughs> I expected to find L Karma lying in bed, but instead he is standing in front of a mirror changing his clothes. Um, is this too hot for Twitch? It should be fine, right? He's not showing nipples, so. Uh, princess? Oh, oh. I don't think I've ever seen a shirtless man before. Oh, indeed. He turns to me and the realization that he's standing there just in his pants hits me hard in the stomach. My, fe feel bleh, my face feels incredibly uncomfortably warm. Why are you just standing there? Put on your clothes! And then I notice the large tattoo on his chest. It is a rose and stared by many vines. I stare at it for a few moments before Karma puts a hand there to conceal it. It's 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 rude to see uh it's rude to come into a lady's room unannounced, you know. I actually don't know which voice to use at that moment. Karma slips his usual dress on carefully over his head, then approaches me. Oh damn it, I used the wrong voice. I take a step back without realizing it. Karma raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me mischievously. It's a familiar look, but it rattles me even more now than it has ever before. Oh, he, has, he doesn't have his lipstick on. My princess, you're as red as a tomato. Are you okay? Does this man always need to point out the obvious? I'm fine! There's no need to shout, darling. Now, what did you come to come here for? To see me, the beautiful karma. Does everything always have to revolve around you? Well, you're breaking into my room. I'm barely able to stifle a sigh. Well, I cross my arms and frown at him. His smile makes it harder to get my next words out. I came here to thank you. Does do my eyes um, do my ears to see me? What did you say, princess? Princess! Thank you for saving me! I saw you fight back. That was a very admirable attempt. You saw me? Yes, as you were coming to the end of the alleyway. But I didn't manage to escape. It doesn't matter, princess. You certainly made the effort. But I digress. You are quite welcome, princess. It was my pleasure. I should leave. Wait, what? <laughs> what? I turn to leave, but Karma grabs my hand and pulls me back. But princess, don't you owe me something? Takara was expecting something in return after all. I should have known. I think you owe me an apology. You did come into my room unannounced after all. What is he talking about? Since you broke into my room, I, just, I demand you help me with my makeup. Then I will forget about your transgression. Your makeup? Yes, darling. I thought you were resting because you were going on patrol tonight. Resting? Nonsense! I watched the do my makeup earlier. It was so messy I had to wash my face in order to reapply it. I cannot believe I am going to agree to this. Fine. Ah, what a splendid day today is. Come, princess, let's do this by a mirror. Carmi pulls me over to a mirror. I can see both of our faces reflected. He has a surprising variety of makeup on the dresser beside him. I don't even care that much for my appearance. Why am I helping Carl with his makeup? Now, which feature on the face do you think is the most important one to highlight? What? What are your eyes attracted to most on the person's face? When they laugh or when they smile? Why is he asking for my opinion on something so trivial? Truthfully? Like my opinion or what Lucette thinks? I mean, it has to be the eyes, right? No, I shouldn't say it like that. I mean, uh, it's different for everyone, but to me, it's the eyes. You always look at a person's eyes first, so the eyes? That's what I thought too. Eyes are the mirrors to your soul, as they say. Are they? 
Oh, great. I got a... I got a small soul, I guess. Does this mean you're always looking into my eyes, princess? The minute he says that, I look into his eyes. Karma flutters his eyelashes at me, and I look back down and grumble. <laughs> That's the first time I see her with this dejected look. What was that, a trick? <laughs> Made you look. What did you think? Think? Oh, my eyes, do they draw you in? I've never looked at Karma's eyes closely, but now that he look, uh, now that he keeps talking about them, I cannot help but look closer. I saw they're a pretty color. My favorite color, green. You don't have to answer that quick, princess. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, of course. Your eyes, on the other hand, are beautiful. Yeah, she has like nice amber, light brown eyes. You and Rampel really are the same person. You both spout nonsensical confidence. Nonsensical? Oh, princess, I'm so offended. I mean what I say, I'm like that fool. Anyway, I let you choose the order of things. Fine. Just don't make me look like a clown, princess. I know how much you like to tease me, but I need to get out of here quickly today. If you need to leave quickly, shouldn't you do your makeup yourself? And miss the opportunity to help you help me? Nonsense! If I can, I'll help you. I'll have you help me with my hair sometime. The way you do yours is beautiful. I always put an effort into my hair as mother always emphasized the importance of looking like a princess. But I've never received a compliment on my ha hairstyle before. Karma gives me his makeup supplies and I start layering the color on his face. When we are this close, I cannot help but carefully inspect every one of his features. I don't think I've even did this with something, uh, I do not think I even did something like this with mother. You know, princess, I don't think I deserve your thanks. I pause and raise an eyebrow at him. What? You've been helping me for a while and I haven't helped you with your curse at all. What did I do? What I did today was just a coincidence. Coincidence? I heard you went to town with Waltz, so I followed you two. I only happened to catch what happened in the alleyway. You managed to see me even when there were so many people who didn't. I have good eyes, probably. Beautiful, green, luscious eyes. Probably. It's not like you to be so humble. Lucette, I am once again offended. And why were you following us in the first place? You said you were too tired to go into town today. Hmm. I was worried. It was strange not accompanying you today. Worried? Why would you be worried? Karma looks puzzled for a few moments. He glances at himself in the mirror solemnly and then shrugs. Intuition, perhaps. Waltz, Waltz mentioned something about feeling watched. Is there something that Waltz and Karma are watching out for that I'm not? Karma closes his eyes momentarily, and I take the opportunity to dust his eyes with eyeshadow. He doesn't seem to mind. Princess, you haven't spoken about what happened today with Delora or Parfait, have you? No, not yet. You came to thank me first? Yes. Oh. Karma falls into silence, and I continue to work, sweeping blush on his high cheekbones. Princess, do you know anything about the man who tried to drag you away today? No, he said only that he worked for the king before telling me he would take me back to the palace. I wonder how he recognized you. I was wondering that myself. How curious and alarming. The only ones who should pose a problem at this time are witches. Witches? What do they want with me? Well, I only mean that witches are the only ones who can see through the curses. So that man spoke with a witch? It's possible. But why? Why would the witches want me back at the palace? Or, or was that man trying to lead me somewhere else? I suppose either way the man couldn't have wanted to bring me back to the palace for a good reason. Is it possible that the witch gave a commoner a description of you? But then why would... Karma stops talking and looks at me with something like sympathy. 
Sorry, just running my head for ideas. I thought really, are the witches really so dangerous? And what do they want with me in the first place? Rest assured, Princess, we'll figure this out. I nodded my head slowly. I have a lot of questions for Delora and Parfait, but it is impossible that even they might not know everything. I'll need to think on my own as well, just in case they decide to keep more of their secrets. I look at Karma and shake my head. Next time, I will be more wary. I won't let myself be caught unaware. Before I realize it, Karma has his hand on my cheek and is staring at me solemnly. His eyes are as cold and unmoving as steel. Princess, there won't be a next time. Th that's what I said. Next time, I'll make sure you're definitely not alone. Had I been alone today, I might have actually been kidnapped. I know that, but I cannot show weakness. I just need to be more cautious. I am a strong, independent woman who needs no man. And been brainwashed by my mother. I am not some damsel in distress, you know. Having someone at your back is far more comforting. Even on the battlefield, knights fight better together. What's wrong? Nothing. He moves his hands. Uh, he moves his hand away from our face, and stands up, sighing. His eyes sun. His eyes look suddenly distant, and his posture is stiff. I think we're about done here, right? I haven't finished your makeup, though. Wait, why am I even concerned about that? <laughs> she was so tied up with it. Having so much fun talking to Karma. Oh, something simpler is simple is better. Or would you like me to sit back down? I do enjoy being pampered by you, princess. I take it back. We are definitely done. Good. Thank you for your hard work. In an instant, the mood changes and a bright smile once again graces Karma's face. As much as I hate to do this, I'm going to have to leave you, darling. I have business in town and then a patrol later tonight, Sparkle. I probably won't see you for the rest of the day, but thank you. He is thanking me for putting on his makeup? No such a small thing. You're welcome. You already thanked me, though. Well, no, I'm twice as thankful as a normal person, Sparkle. That doesn't make any sense, but it's karma. A lot of things he says doesn't make sense. I leave the room with karma, and he leaves the tiver. He leaves the tavern as I go to find Parfait and Delora. The two of them are seated together at the reception, speaking in hushed voices when they arrive. Or when I arrive. They both pause to look at me as I walk into the room. Well, well, if it isn't the princess, took you long enough to come see us. Anise, Anise told us you were unharmed. We're glad to see you safe, princess. So how about telling us what happened? When I prompted, I tell them everything that transpired in the alleyway. The two listen, and I only exchange a solemn glance when I am done. Do you know something about all this that I don't? Why would the witches be after me in the first place? You met- Oh, Is this when they re reveal the truth about Muset? You remember what we said about Tanabaram corrupting witches? Well, those like, witches don't like seeing curses broken. They meddle where they can because they can. That's why I cast a glamour on you when you first arrived here so that you could remain hidden from magical eyes. I did it, protect, I did it to protect you. Protect me? I feel like there's more than more to this that they are hiding. But I don't think any amount of convincing will get them to say anything. Forget about us, princess. We're not entirely sure what's going on either. Though, if it was a human that captured you, he must be working with the witches somehow. Troublesome to say the least, but we don't know the details yet. Give us some time to figure things out. Until we figure out who that man is and who he's working for, you need to have an escort with you out of the Martian at all times. Do you understand? And once you figure it out, you'll tell me. The two exchange another look, which only makes me more frustrated. They are obviously keeping secrets and frightened from me. I'll tell you once everything falls into place. 
Don't worry, princess. We will never let you be put into danger. But silence is what ends our conversation. I make my way back to my room, feeling heavy. Feet heavy. Feel like a fly caught in a spider's web. I try my best to clear my mind as I return to my room. The days go by slowly and I make no progress with my curse. Karma is busy with the knights today and Laura and Parfait are busy talking with Rampel about his curse in the room. Tonight is the perfect night to go and wander the town by myself. Are you fucking kidding me? They just said. Oh, she's so dumb. I need to see if I can find out anything about the witches and what is happening around the kingdom. Oh, this dumb, this dumb, dumb girl. The lore and Parfait are not giving, going to tell me anything. And no one has wanted to take me out of the margin since the kidnapping attempt. These thoughts spiral helplessly in my mind as I sit at the table. I have just finished working for the day and the activity in the Martian is beginning to wind down. Garland stands at the door as the last few customers leave the Martian. Uh, Yurian is walking around the, tar around the room to make sure that no one... <sighs> Yurian is walking around the room to make sure that no... Ah! Why do I keep messing up there? To make sure that there are no problems. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice two men pause halfway across the room and glance back at her. I can overhear their words from where I am. Shame that he's a knight, eh? She's the proud type, too proud to let a man dote on her. Bleeding shame, it is. But do you think if I tried to say something to her? You, t you too. Carlin is suddenly standing behind the two men. An uncharacteristically dark glare on his face. Is there a problem? Doors are closing for the night. I'm asking you to please leave. But no, need to be up so uptight, lad. We're on our way out now. Zim Roston, hello. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the stream. And this horrible, horrible attempt of voice acting. Uh, the two men walk out and Garland stands in the middle of the tavern area, glaring after them. He's more- he more or less pushed him out of the tavern? If Anise had seen that, she'd probably have him- She'd probably have scolded him. Garland. You okay? Of course. You think you can fool me? I've known you long enough to know that something's bothering you. Neither of the knights seem to notice me here. If they do, they ignore me. Yurian is still looking insistently at Garland, who looks down at the floor. Is he going to say something to her? Just confess, goddammit! Garland says nothing though. He looks at a loss for words. Finally, Yurian reaches out and pokes his shoulder, and he looks up startled. Still, still the same as always, the silent, watchful night. Only say things when, with certainty until... Only says things with certainty when he knows they're the truth. Even the princess is waiting for you to say something. Both knights turn to look at me and Garland seems surprised. I raise an eyebrow at him and he hurriedly looks away. Patrol is starting soon. I'll head out first. Okay, stay safe. Carlin nods at her with a little smile before he leaves the tavern. God damn it! He didn't fucking confess to her! It's been six months already! <laughs> That's Lucette in her mind. And my mind. Going to sleep soon, princess? I was just going to head up. I stand up and get ready to move to my room, but stop once more to look at Yurian. Did he who? Did you hear what those men were saying? Oh, about me being too proud or something? So she did hear them. Chose to say nothing. It doesn't bother me. They're right. I've been independent for a long time. 
and I would never think about pledging my safety to a man I barely know. I can take care of myself. Blunt and to the point, Yurian really was really admired for that honesty in the palace. The only other man I've trusted before are my fellow knights. Garland most of all, since we've always been partners. She dotes. She does not explain further. I decide that is for the better. The sooner everyone has cleared out, the sooner I can leave the Martian. Tonight is the night I go looking for answers. Oh, come on. This is not a good idea at all. Sorry, Karma. I couldn't handle myself. If I'm going to prove it tonight... Uh, uh, but I can pr but I can handle myself. I'm going to prove it tonight. I may not be able to fight back, but I can still be cautious enough to not land myself into trouble. Still, I do not happen to hear much of anything as I explore the town tonight. I should have brought along some kind of weapon, but then I would have to steal a knife from the kitchen. I am not a thief. Hours pass by before I pass a tavern filled with knights. Deciding that I will at least listen to what is happening at the palace, I linger by the open door and listen to what the men are saying. I hear that young Fritz is having a hard time with it. I feel bad for the lad. Even Sir Alcaster thinks he's gone mad. Well, he does keep talking about a princess that doesn't exist. Fritz still remembers me. Even his father is growing weary about what is babbling. Sir Mithros forced him to forced him on break the other day. He didn't seem happy. Well, Sir Mithros must think he's crazy too. Poor Fritz. Can you keep a secret? Knights look at each other and they lean as close as possible close as I possibly can. Apparently apparently the boy speaks some truth. So, though Sir Alcaster doesn't quite believe it, he's looking for the daughter of the previous queen. What? Hey, the witch had a, hey, the witch had a daughter. The previous queen? Are they talking about mother? How dare they call her a witch? Apparently, they she did. Though I don't ever remember such a girl. This is top secret stuff. I just happened to wrestle this out out of one of the lackeys looking for her. What would Sir Alcaster need this girl for? I'm assuming she's dangerous and that they want to get rid of her. Are they talking about me? Um, yes, yes, 100% yes. I'm curious. Well, how are we supposed to find this imaginary princess anyway? Does she have any features? I. they described her. Features. Last man who went looking for her, she s said she wore a special pendant around her neck. Oh shit! I should get out of here! I turn to leave the tanner tavern, but my cloak snags on the door and falls to the floor, tripping me up in the process. I end up falling halfway into the tavern, where the chatter abruptly stops. Oh, this... Is this... Oh, a lady. The knights that were talking approach me. One of them picks up my cloak. I attempt to grab my cloak from their fingers, but they pull it away from me and I stumble into one of them. Madam? He moves to take my hand, but then he stops when he sees my face. Her foot, her face, and a necklace. You think she was spying on us? What? Which? One of the knights grabs me by the wrist and pulls me towards him. He is far stronger than the man in the alley was. Unhand me right now, I am no witch. And there, then there should be no trouble. We're, do, we're just going to take you in, and if there's something... Uh, we're just going to take you in, and if there's some big misunderstanding, we'll repay you ourselves, miss. No, let me go! This behavior is not fitting for a knight. Come now, miss. Let's go back quietly. Oh, they're not gonna get convinced because they obviously... I may be outnumbered, but I cannot let myself be caught. Maybe the peer, bar, people at the bar will help me. I open my mouth to scream, but one of the night covers my mouth as some attention falls on us. 
Nothing to fear here, everyone. Just criminal we've apprehended. Yeah, that doesn't look suspicious at all. Two grown men has a little girl in their custody and covers her mouth. <laughs> That's not suspicious at all, is it? Oh my god. I struggle in their grasp, but the men are too strong for me. Don't fight back, ma'am. Resistance is useless. Every everyone in the bar looks scared of me. This is even worse than everyone glaring at me. I try to blink back the tears as they come into my eyes. Come on, let's take her back to the palace. I've been like changing soldiers' B Night B's voice to like three different voices. Oosh. The knights lead me out onto the empty streets. Why? Why did I have to be so stubborn and stupid? The knights continue pulling me down the path until we've come to the narrow street. Everyone who walk, everyone who sees us walks away to avoid the knights. There is fear in their eyes. But I've done nothing wrong. Ma'am, if it makes you feel any better, we're risking our rank on this as well. I don't know, I'm suspicious of... Who goes there? <gasps> Yay! I look up and notice Karma's familiar figure walking towards us. What is he what, what is he doing here and why isn't he in his disguise? Gentlemen, I ask you to unhand that woman. As a knight, I would be ashamed to see I would be ashamed to be seen treating a lady so terribly. And who are you? Her husband. His what? Unhand her, gentlemen, or taste my blade. Sir, we were just taking her to the palace to... I will give you on the count of three. One, one, of, one knight grips his... One knight keeps his grip on me as the other draws his sword. I stare at Karma, who continues to count the... Though, the knight attacks him before the sword leaves his sh sheath. Karma and the knight trade blows, but it is Karma that comes out victorious. His knight... His... Guys, it's been a long night. Cut me some slack, please. His blade slides past the knight's shoulder, distracting him enough to give Karma the opening he needs. Karma reaches back with his free hand to knock the knight out with a blow to the head. It may just be my imagination, but for a few moment, moments, I think I see the knight's blade glimmer across the surface of Karma's hand before he falls. The knight holding me holds his hands in surrender. I yield, sir! Seems no, it seems no matter how this situation turns out, you are dishonorable. Please, sir! Damn. Karma knocks him out and then stands beside me as he sheaths his sword. Karma, I... A few moments, Losette. Karma spends some time forcing a potion from a vial down each of the knight's throats. I watch him quietly, fearing that he might have killed them. Uh, but the knights only seem to be asleep. Oh, a potion, a potion that Parfait gave me. It will give, it will make the men forget they ever saw you. When Karma stands again, I notice the glimmer of blood on his hand and stare. You hurt? It's nothing. I'm sorry. Come on, princess. Let us go back. He pulls me right out into the main street and does not let go of my hand. I cannot bring myself to speak. Karma saved me twice now. Not only that, but this time he's injured. He says it's nothing, but his bloody hand does not move at all. Why do I have to be so stubborn and insist I can handle myself? I do not speak for a long time. Eventually, I notice people start to stare. Though, before long, the staring grows worse. Young women begin following us, giggling from behind. I turn to Karma, who looks like he hasn't slept in days. Karma! Sorry, princess, but I'm not in the mood to talk. Those girls are walking right behind us. This is... this curse? Karma? <laughs> Lisette, 
I just said I am in no mood to talk. Did you not hear me? You're being followed! He stares behind us almost stupidly, then laughs hollowly. When he sees the girls, he's... I see his face. He starts to rush towards us! <laughs> Their voice rising and blending together in a horrendous cacophony. Karma is not moving though, he looks resigned. Maybe he's just too tired to realize what he wants to do. That, that's understandable. I tighten the grip on Karma's hand and pulls him away, my pace quickening for a run. As the girls chase us, screaming at me angrily for taking Karma away from them. Lucette, what are you doing? Getting us out of here! Lucette! I lead him through the town and into the little nooks and crannies where we managed to lose some of the crowd. Karma often led me through some of these spaces as shortcuts. Waltz knew them too. Once we are alone again, I stop, falling to my knees and letting go of Karma's hand as I catch my breath. That really was a curse! Having to run away for s from so many mindless women! That was difficult! Who said? What? I didn't mean to stab, but the tiredness is pressing on me too. You, uh, you helped me out there. Of course I did! Why would I want to be chased by girls? You could have left me behind and gone alone. Instead, you helped me. You helped me too. I guess I paid you back. Though, to be honest, I wasn't even thinking about repaying him for saving me. I just knew I didn't want Karma to be stuck trying to fend off all those girls. He was right about his curse. That is terrible. I just realized something. Karma kneels down beside me and waits for me to speak. My curse has people forget me. And your curse has even strangers become fascinated by you. It almost it's almost like our curses are opposites of each other and yet 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 we are so similar. My eyes widen when I realize what I just said. We are similar, aren't we? He holds out his good hand to me and I let him lead him me back to the tavern through the abandoned alleyways. My feet are heavy and I and all I want to do is sleep. But suddenly Karma is standing before me, his face grave. Who said, I have to thank you for helping me earlier. I'm sorry I froze like that and made it more difficult on you. It was so sudden and I was so tired, I had no motiva motivation to move. Shouldn't I be thanking you? I'll accept your thanks, even though I wish you didn't have to thank me in the first place. You should not have gone out on your own when you knew how dangerous it could be for you. I'm sorry. I'll, exp I'll accept your apology too, because I lost sleep over this. I have no words for how I feel right now. Princess. Aww. Karma reaches for my hand again, and this time he holds it up and kisses the back of it. Suddenly, all the tiredness falls away. You really are a handful. But a delightful handful. I'm going to bandage this hand and then rest. We'll speak later about all this, okay? But the blood! The bleeding stopped on its own, Lucette, said, but it does not need to be treated. Don't worry, it will be fine. Are you sure? As sure as I can be. I don't lie, not even for the sake of a pretty lady. Oh, oh, oh. Karma lets his hand go as soon as we enter the Martian and then bows immediately to me before heading back into his room. I watch him go, my, uh, my mind whirling. Does he usually kiss women's hands? No, I don't think so. Matchmaking. Alright. I'm gonna end it. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm gonna end it there. Um. It seems like it properly recorded this time as I look into. Um. OBS. 
And uh, yeah, we'll continue this off in another day. Oh man, every time I do Lucette's voice, I get dizzy. Oof. All right, let's see. Yeah, I just had to make sure that everything looked okay, um, visually and audioly. Audioly? Audio-wise. <laughs> uh, words are hard. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of the weekend. And uh, it's now morning. I have to do other stuff. Ooh, real life is hard. But never give up. And uh, I'll see you again. Have a good one. Bye.